Hello, everybody. I'm going to introduce a new theme that I'll be hitting on, uh, on and off, called The Bride or the Harlot. You must choose. And I really pray to God that I can help make people think and maybe we can reach people where they're at. Let me start with a Revelation quote, Revelation 19, verse 7 through 11. Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Revelation 19, 7 through 11. I love the church. From the time of my conversion to Christ 40 years ago, I knew that I was called to partake in the company known as the bride. What a privilege to know Jesus, to anticipate finally seeing him, to be called to identify with him in this present evil age, even if it means accepting rejection and reproach in this life. The true church is the bride of Christ. We, the body of Christ, are the bride. And I get the metaphor. As a man, at first, it may be a little uncomfortable, but it, I, I get it. It's a prophetic me metaphor. We are the ones whom our Lord has purchased and redeemed. We are the company who have forsworn all else and who wait the day of all days, which is called the marriage supper of the Lamb which is the ground of all true joy and happiness. And we hold to his word while we wait, which he gave us. We won't forsake it, for he has never forsaken us. We love him because he loved us first. In fact, we didn't choose him. He chose us to be with him. We merely accepted. In prophetic imagery, a spiritual body of worshipers is likened unto a woman. We hear the prophet speaking in God's name to the daughter of Zion, tenderly calling to her, wooing Israel as the wife of Yahweh, the bride whom he sought and whom he rebought out of the slave market, as in Hosea. Israel seen as being pregnant with a man-child in the deep and mysterious vision of Revelation 12, whilst the dragon, the serpent of old, awaits the birth of that he might destroy the man-child before he can accomplish his mission. That child is the seed of the woman who eventually crushed the serpent's head. The New Testament, too, speaks of the church as the bride, the one who makes herself ready, and who in the crisis leading up to the wedding, when loyalties are tested or when pressured to defect mount, the espoused virgin remains true. She is attacked, despised, rejected in this world, because she has been a spouse to him who loved her and washed her in his blood. But she waits patiently for the marriage and pre prepares herself, as all brides do, by good works. Both the book of Revelation and the book of Proverbs have this in common, that the bride or is the major theme in each of them. Remember in Proverbs that the king's son must pick a bride. We hold our breath early in Proverbs when the wrong woman presents herself almost immediately, for we are hoping that he picks the right one. And I quote Proverbs 2, 16 through 19, that discretion will de deliver you from the strange woman, even the stranger which flatters with her words, who forsakes the guide of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house inclines unto death and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. It isn't as simple as merely picking the right one. It gets complicated, for an alternative is presented. The bride, the bride is out there, but so also is the strange woman. And in parentheses, strange means foreign, i.e. foreign religions. We're so relieved by the time we get to the end of Proverbs, when the king's son picks the virtuous woman, as described in Proverbs 31. 
She girds her loins with strength. She strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle doesn't go out by night. She lays her hands to the spindle and her hands to the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. Proverbs 31, 17 through 20. Notice the emphasis on hands and arms. What is this all about? Do you believe that Proverbs is just good dating advice for teenagers? Or could there be something else being said in all of this comparison of differing kinds of women? Look at the passage in Proverbs 2 again. She flatters with her words. She forsakes the guide of her youth, the covenant of her God. Her paths lead to the dead. She fails, falling short of the path of life. The revelation also has this contrast between the true bride who makes herself ready and the harlot, which is an obscene parody of a bride. And I quote Revelation 17. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come here, I'll show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit on a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Revelation 17, 1 through 6. We are horrified like John was at this spectacle. The Apostle John only knew a persecuted, despised, impoverished bride who is this gaudy, blasphemous, powerful in worldly terms, drunken harlot. In the prophetic imagery, the women, once again, represent spiritual bodies, congregations of people, the daughter of Zion, the wife of Yahweh, the bride of Christ, the harlot. Jesus is the true bridegroom, and his friends, John the Baptist and the disciples, are called the friends of the bridegroom. But as usual, there are choices presented. There is a substitute word. There is a substitute spirit. There's a substitute Christ as well. And there is a substitute bride who turns out to be a harlot. We who call on the Lord have to choose between the bride or the harlot. More to come.